On this episode of Student DV, we are here to learn. We'll be teaching you about adding mixed numbers, how to blow up a balloon using baking soda and vinegar, and surprisingly, how to fail a class. All this and more on Student DV. I'm Danny Finnebur. Today is Thursday. When I was in high school, we usually did Montana coal and iron. Every second of the day. What'd you call Fred? <laughs> Sometimes math can seem really hard, but these kids make it look easy. From Folks Ranch Elementary, we have student producer Emily Souza here to talk about making her video. I worked with mostly all my videos, my math videos, I was with the same, it was the same group. So we were always like, we always had a job that we would do. On one of my videos, we had nine scripts, just because it was very challenging and it was a hard concept to write about. And writing math videos is hard. Hi, I'm Emma. I'm Miley. And I'm Emily. And today we are going to teach you how to add mixed numbers using bar model. First, you'll get a piece of paper to show your syntax, and if you need to, you can do side work on the side of your paper. Then you will write your expression down. Now you will try to solve your expression. So now we will simplify. 1 and 1 fifth plus 1 and 2 fifths. To start, draw one bar that represents 1. Then, draw a bar divided into fifths. On the bar divided into fifths, you are going to shade in one-fifth, and you now have one and one-fifth. Then, draw a bar. This represents one. Draw a second bar and divide the pieces into fifths. Shade two-fifths. You now have a model of one and two-fifths. Now you will add the pieces together. The two whole bars will equal two, and then three-fifths come from the one and two-fifths added together. Let's simplify another expression. 1 and 1 ninth plus 1 and 4 ninths. There will be two bars representing 1 and two bars divided into ninths. On one of the ninth bars, you will shade in 1 ninth and the other 4 ninths. Add the two bars with 1, then the 4 ninths, and then 1 ninth. You should get an answer of 2 and 5 ninths. You have finished your problem. Thanks for watching how to add mixed numbers using bar model. I'm Miley. I'm Emma. And I'm Emily. Science experiments can be really cool, but it's important to stay safe while you are doing them. Today we have the students of Natomas Charter School to teach us about science safety. Well, that's one way to crush a can. But did you know there's a way to crush a can without any physical force? All you need is pressure and hot water. Student producer and my good friend, Andrew Stuns, is here to talk about it. So we explain how, um, how we crush, you can crush a can with 
boiling water in the can and regular water outside. And so we explain the science behind that and we show you how to prepare and do this at your own house or your friends. And so we tell you like the safety and you need a parent watching to make sure you don't get burned by a burner. And so we show you how to crush a can. How to crush a can with five easy steps. The items you will need are a tub, tongs, a soda can, and a stove. First, fill up the tub with water. Put a little bit of water in a soda can, just enough to cover the bottom. And make sure you have a parent watching you since you're working with boiling water. Turn the stove on high. Then place the soda can that's barely filled up with water on the stove. Wait until the water is boiling vigorously and steam is coming out the top of the can. Then you're ready to crush your can. Pick up the can with your tongs and tilt it upside down on the top of the water. The can should now be crushed. Make sure you turn off the stove all the way. And now all you have to do is recycle the can. Let's go through this again. Pour the water into a tub. Put a little water into the soda can. Heat the can. Crush the can. And recycle. Let's go through what we learned when we crushed the can. When you heat the can, all the molecules are bouncing around in the can, making pressure. But when you tip it over on top of the water, it creates a vacuum. But instead of sucking in the water, the can crushes. Everyone knows about bubbles, right? An air pocket enveloped in some sort of fluid-like substance? Well, it turns out there are other ways to make a bubble, and we have a student from Andrew Carnegie Middle School to show us how. You know your everyday bubble, right? Then you have these kind. Well, in this video, we are going to show you how to create an abnormal type of bubble. Step one, get your materials. You will need tongs, two bowls, water, dry ice, soapy water, and a rag. Step two, take a bowl and fill it up with water about halfway. Step three, put the rag in the bowl of soapy water. Step four, use the tongs to put the dry ice in the bowl of water. You will notice that fog will start coming out of the bowl. Step five, wipe the soapy rag around the bowl. Step six, drag your rag across the top of the bowl. An abnormal bubble will start to rise. You know it's important to study and work hard in school, but sometimes you might need a little extra help to really learn. At Elitha Donner Elementary School, the teachers and adults are taking steps to provide extra help for the students who need it. CAP, Concerned African American Parents. Parents came together uh, last year in the spring because they were concerned that students African-American students weren't doing as well as they could, and they wanted to provide assistance. Uh, what it means to me and to the whole program, it's parents, community, and school coming together for all students so that they can improve. At the end of the day, do you feel satisfied with the program? Oh, without question. I am extremely satisfied um, because of the number of children that are coming out. When we had the uh, idea for doing this program, we had no idea how many children and families would really support it. We knew the school supported it, 
we knew that we had uh, caring adults in the community that supported it, but we didn't know if the children and the families would be supportive of it. Um, right now, we just had a, a meeting with the executive team, and it sounds like we're averaging about 50 children every Monday afternoon. That is, for me, a huge success just based on the attendance. But also, the children that are coming are excited to be there. They are encouraged um, about learning. They feel empowered because they're getting better academically. Um, and so we have incentives for them. When you get done, you can go read a book, you can go play in the computer lounge, you get snacks. And the com community volunteers is another success at the end of the day. As I'm driving away from Donner um, in the evening, I just feel really proud that so many people, so many adults who work pretty much most of the day, take off from work a little bit early to come to Letha Donner to help these kids. And that just means a lot to me, that they are willing, being blessed to be a blessing to others. How do you like CAP Academy? I like CAP because CAP, you can do your um, homework there with never you, I mean, after you can finish it and then and then you get to have snacks while, even while you're watching movies sometime. And then you do you like Cap Academy? Yeah, I really enjoy it. Why do you like it? I get to help a lot of students and it's really fun to work with them. What goes on at Cap Academy? Well, basically people just try to do their homework and it's like a pretty good environment to do your homework since it's quiet yeah. most of the time, but it's really cool. Now for a little more mixed numbers from Folks Ranch Elementary. Student producer Drew Rodriguez, can you tell us a little bit more about your video? Um, it's about adding mixed numbers and the method I'm using is the open number line. It's a, uh, it's a method you use to add mixed numbers. Drew. And I'm Erica. We're going to show you how we solve an addition equation using open number line. Let's use the problem C plus 247 equals 350. The first step is to write your problem and draw your number line. Next, place your variable on the far left of the number line. Why? Because you are adding. And when you add on a number line, you're going to move toward the right. The next step would be to start from the variable and jump 247 to the right of your variable. After jumping 247 to the right, you will land on 350. Why 350? Look back at the equation. It says some number C increased by 247 is 350. You are now 247 units away from your variable C and on the number 350. The question now is how do you get back to your variable? Since we've got 350 by adding 247, we'll go back to our variable by using the inverse operation, subtracting 247. While you're jumping back, you don't have to jump 247 at once. You could first jump 200 to the left. You should land on 150. Next, jump 40 to the left. You will be on 110. Finally, jump 7 to the left. You will be left with a difference of 103. Open number lines benefit you because they're very visual. And they're kind of fun, too. Thank, Thank you for watching.
While it's important to know what you should do in school, it might also be helpful to know what not to do in school. Student producer Sam Heglin has made a video about how to fail a class. Tell us about it, Sam. Um, the video that I worked on was uh, how to fail class where kids could uh, learn in a humorous way how to fail so they know not what to do. We've all blown up a balloon with just our breath, but that's plain boring. I want to blow up a balloon using science. Student producer Jasmine Elmoden, can you show me how? Uh, it's basically about just how to, you put in vinegar and baking soda into a bottle and you put a balloon over the top and um, the chemicals mix and it blows up the balloon. Hello, I'm Bailey, and we're going to blow up a balloon using vinegar and baking soda. This is an experiment that you can try to see what happens when vinegar and baking soda is combined chemically. To have your supplies, begin by placing the 16 ounce water bottle. Then spoon two tablespoons of vinegar into the empty bottle. Once the vinegar is poured, you may now insert the funnel inside of the balloon and pour one teaspoon of baking soda. Make sure not to spill any of the baking soda. Now stretch your balloon over the top of your bottle. You may now transfer the baking soda from the balloon to the bottle. Watch as your balloon blows up due to the mixture of the baking soda and vinegar. The balloon blew up because of a chemical reaction from the baking soda and vinegar resulting in carbon dioxide which eventually fills up both the balloon and the bottle. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Butterflies are pretty manly, aren't they? And how they go from caterpillar to butterfly, it's plain amazing. Some students at Frontier Elementary showed us how to make the butterfly's life cycle using model magic. Student producer Dominique Thomas is here to talk to us about filmmaking. We get to make, we get to make the video by deciding on anything we want like a uh, how-to video or something like that. How we get to decide on the video and then just make it or do it however we want. This is my first year doing it, so it's interesting and a new experience. Hi. My name is Dominic Thomas. And I'm Teddy Elm. And we are here to show you how to make a butterfly's life cycle using model magic. First, we are going to do the eggs. This is a package of model magic. Did you know it takes a butterfly a day to a year to lay all of its eggs? It all depends on its temperature. And to make the egg, you take a small piece of the model magic and roll it in a ball with your hands.
That's how you make the egg. This is how you make the caterpillar. First, you're going to get six round pieces um, of model magic and put them together. Caterpillars use camouflage, so I am going to make my yellow and green. Caterpillars have 16 tiny legs, so you can put legs if you want. And that's how you make the caterpillar. This is how you make the chrysalis. You get a large piece of white and then a little piece of brown and then mix it together like this until you get something like this. Did you know caterpillars can spend weeks to months in their chrysalises? The next part of life cycle is the butterfly. Did you know it takes a butterfly three to four hours to dry its wings? And to make the butterfly, you take a medium-sized piece of model magic and roll it in your hands like a snake for the body. Like this. Then, for the wings, you take another medium-sized piece and pl place it on a flat surface and press down gently. Do that four times for each wing. And then connect them to the body. the antenna, you take a small piece and roll it like a cylinder and place it on the top of the body. And if you want, you can make a little decorations on its wings. Roll it in a ball, put it on there, and press down, but not too hard. I'm putting two on each wing so that there's a lot of decoration. And there's the butterfly. And that's how you make a butterfly's life cycle using model magic. Basically, we were just not having an idea, and like, I don't know, it was like something like December, and Cameron says he comes up with this idea. The idea just popped in my mind, and blammo! Well, we got to build the plate of monsters. I was kind of the guy that did the camera. Yeah, it was pretty easy. Just pressing a button. My like mom has told me like she thinks I am like the perfect video being theater majugger. Keep this to yourself, I have stage fright. It's kind of scary because I'm not sure we'll win.
I would say that it's a great opportunity to learn a bunch of things that if you kind of want to be someone who's on TV, that would help you a lot. And that's how you make a planet monster. I'm not sure what I want to do. Yeah, I got time to decide that. If you would like to get your video on Student TV, you just need to enter it into the SEVAs, the Student Educational Video Awards. Entries are due in March each year, and you can find out more information about the SEVAs and Student TV on the SECC website, seccTV.org. Well, that was a really educational episode. I feel smarter already. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Student TV.